Hello, hello, Sarah of SEK Handmade here, and I am so excited to be back with you after a week off to celebrate Thanksgiving with my family. Um, today, we are going to talk about seven gift ideas, small gift ideas slash stocking stuffers um, for yarn lovers, crocheters, and knitters. Um, I do stockings in my family. And so I feel like stocking stuffers are one of the most <laughs> difficult things to get. Uh, so difficult that I often fall for those little articles that are like, I, I distinctly last year remember reading one that it was like, 10 gift ideas for the, or stocking stuffer ideas for the gentleman in your life. And I was like, ah, oh, that's just what I need. And I click on it and I start reading and I start looking at their ideas. I kid you not, not a single thing on that list was under $50. So <laughs> I want to be real clear here. I consider stocking stuffers and small gifts, generally speaking, under $15. If it is small and it is over $20, it always goes under the tree. I do not consider that a stocking stuffer. I consider a stocking stuffer something that is small in size because it needs to fit in the stocking, but also small in price. So all of my suggestions, of course, you can buy at a wide uh, price range, but all of them have options that are under $15. All right. So no, no $50 or like, I'm not getting you ear pods and sticking them in your stocking. <laughs> Nothing like that going around on here. The other great thing is if you don't use stockings, like, um, I got married, we celebrate with my in-laws and I'm like, hmm, no stockings. Like some families just don't do that or you don't celebrate Christmas or any holiday right now. But the end of the year can be a good time to um, to give a small gift to um, to friends, to family, to people who mean a lot in your life. Teachers, if you've got kids, um, let me tell you, the most important people in your life, if you are like out in like an office somewhere, the secretary and the janitor. Those two people make the building run. So a little gift thanking them for all of their unseen work that they do throughout the year. Um, and I know that Yarny gifts aren't perfect for all of those, those people, but maybe think, um, I know my husband works with several crafty people that, that some of these might be um, appropriate gifts for. So here we go. I have seven ideas for small gifts slash stocking stuffers for either you to give as ideas to friends and family, because I mean, I, I struggle with what to give other people. I'm sure other people might struggle with what to give me. So this would be a great thing to share uh, with friends or family who might be looking for gifts to give you. Or if you are someone who has other yarn lovers in your life, um, maybe a little idea of something to get a friend or family member who also loves yarn. Also, I'd like to mention in the description below, I'm, I have links to several suggestions. Like I said, each of these items is like a kind of a category of item and there are lots of options at lots of price points. Um, so feel free to use that as kind of like a starting point. Um, so links to lots of ideas in the description below. I'm also going to link to a blog post that talks a little bit more, like if you like to read or if it's easy to like send that off to sister-in-law who might not know what to get you or, or sister. My, my sister does not do yarn craft, um, that you can send that off to them for, um, maybe some ideas for yourself. So make it easy on them. <laughs> All right, my first suggestion is something that I love and I hoard, and you can never have too many of them, in my opinion, and that is stitch markers. I am a firm believer in never too many whips. Uh, I try to have self-control sometimes, but like, you know, 
it, it's not hurting anybody for me to have another whip. So uh, I indulge myself in that area. And a lot of whips take several stitch markers. I worked, uh, I just finished up a test and the, the back panel is this gorgeous um, shell stitch. But like to keep track of things, you put like, because I worked a size large, I put like seven or eight stitch markers <laughs> across uh, that back panel at a time. On top of all the other stitch markers, I had in other whips. Um, so I really feel like you can never have too many stitch markers. When I started out, I kept it real simple. I bought, uh, you know, inexpensive things and mostly from local uh, big box craft stores. And so Clover has some um, some really simple and um, inexpensive stitch markers that you can purchase. Um, I since have, um, you know, delved deep into the yarn community and now am in love with all sorts of really um, gorgeous, fancy stitch markers. Um, I love, I have some wooden laser cut stitch markers that are gorgeous. Um, there are enamel stitch markers. There are beautiful metalwork stitch markers. There are um, gorgeous beaded stitch markers. There are polymer clay stitch markers that blow my mind that people can make such gorgeous things that are so tiny. <laughs> and so there are lots and lots of beautiful, beautiful stitch markers. Um, I want to tell you about the three types of stitch markers that there are. And um, they ha all have things to consider when you're considering who you're purchasing for or what you might need in your stitch marker collection. So the th three types of stitch marker are a locking stitch marker. And that is like this. They are often shaped like... Uh, a safety pin or something similar and they open but then you can lock them closed um you will also see a lot of handmade stitch markers have this for their locking stitch marker it looks kind of like an earring and you can lock it closed so that's a locking stitch marker these are great for crocheters because you can lock that final the live stitch um, when you're working in a locking stitch marker and um, your project then shouldn't unravel because who hasn't like picked up their project and like the ball of yarn is like caught in the sofa cushion and you start pulling your project and like <laughs> unraveling it. It's so sad. So putting a locking stitch marker um, at the in the live stitch is is great. If you are a knitter, locking stitch markers can also be good for you. Um, many projects have uh, instructions where you might repeat something every so many rows. And so when you put a locking stitch marker, you can put uh, the stitch marker on your first row. If it says repeat for eight rows, you repeat seven more times until you get to eight rows. Then you move the locking stitch marker up and do it again. Um, so I find locking stitch markers are handy for both knitters and crocheters. There are also what's called a split um, stitch marker. These look like a circle or almost like a curly cue, a spiral. And these are circles that have an opening that don't, they don't lock closed. Um, I, I actually don't own any of these and I don't prefer to use them because sometimes, depending on how well they fit in your stitches and how loose your stitches are, they can fall out. So it's a little more finicky to use a locking stitch marker, but it's what I prefer. But um, if your crafter doesn't have split stitch markers, that might be a good way to go. And the last one is, um, I'm calling it a circle stitch marker. These are just usually called stitch markers. These are for um, knitters. They come in different sizes and they just slip over your needle. They're great for indicating um, the beginning of a round if you're working in the round or um, like this is where I'm always going to knit two together. I like to place a stitch marker because then I just don't blow past that and realize two rounds later that I missed that. <laughs> So those are the three types of stitch markers. I want to show you um, a couple uh, sets of really pretty stitch markers that I have. I have these enamel stitch markers. These are from 
uh, we crochet slash knit picks. Cute little cactuses there. They are so adorable. And they come uh, with a locking. They're each on a locking stitch marker. So they're adorable and very useful. Um, I will say I am super biased to this next one. I know the maker of these stitch markers and she's a lovely and wonderful and generous person. So I highly encourage you support her if you can. I'm going to show you a couple of her products uh, today, not because we're friends, but because I use and love them. And they're some of my favorites. Um, my friend Brienne of She Inspired, capital S, H E inspired. It's all one word. She has an Etsy shop. The link is in the description below. She makes the most gorgeous wooden laser cut stitch markers. How beautiful is that? She's got all sorts of things from really classy um, flowers uh, and leaves. And I don't know if these are available, but um, she made a mountain theme to go with a blanket that the Crochet Miss Crew designed. She also has some really adorable ones. Um, I don't have any of her winter themed ones, but I know she has some winter themed ones that are super cute. A, a little snowman is coming to mind. So cute. Um, but she had these little sheep with the heart, like the body is a yarn ball and then he's got a heart in the middle of him. So, so cute. I highly uh, recommend Brian's stitch markers. They are very high quality and super adorable. All right. So if you have a lot of stitch markers already and you don't uh, want to ask for more, or if you're unsure, if you are the gift giver and you're unsure of um, what type of stitch marker the person you're giving to um, has or wants or would use. Another great idea is a little plastic bin with, um, or metal. I mean, if you could find a tin one, that would be super cute. Um, a little, you know what? Look at this. I have one right here. I bought this at a craft store. It's like an Altoid tin the lid slides, slides off and I keep a bunch of my loose stitch markers in there. So a little tin like this, or like at craft stores, they sell a bunch of um, like little bins. They're usually meant for like beads or um, uh, scrapbooking supplies, but they would be perfect to put a bunch of your little stitch markers in there to organize them. So an organizing bin for stitch markers is like a little bonus suggestion. All right. My next suggestion is a row counter. Often we have projects that say things like, um, repeat for seven rows or for row seven through 23, repeat row, whatever. And I don't know about you, but my brain does not hold those numbers in them when I walk away. <laughs> so having a row counter is super handy. These come in a wide variety from super inexpensive. I, I was looking for the one I had. I can't find it. It was just a little like like a turn. It was a circle that would fit over your knitting needle or your crochet hook. Um, or you could just, you know, have it laying next to you. And it had like a, like a padlock, not a padlock, like a lock that you turn the numbers. And so you just turn the numbers to keep track of your row. I, I found, I have this teeny little digital one that my friend gave me. It's another great option. Those two types are super inexpensive. Like, I want to say this digital one was under $5. So great idea for a stocking stuffer um, or a small gift for a friend. You can get really gorgeous row counters. Um, there are several companies that offer um, enamel pins that are row markers or row counters. And so you can pin it to your project bag and then keep track of your, your row that you're on. Um, they also make a ring that has a spinning, um, two spinning dials that you can keep track of. I looked at the ring just today. Um, those are more expensive. I'm going to say between $20 and $35 I found on Amazon. Um, so to me, that's outside my stocking stuffer budget. But 
it may not be for you. So something to think about. And I mean, some really, really beautiful things and a really handy tool and something that maybe not everybody has. The other thing that that tool is super handy for is if you make garments, um, I'm short. <laughs> My arms are not as long as taller people. So they may say to me in a sleeve direct instruction, work uh, 83 rows. Well, my short little arms don't need 83 rows, so I may only put 70 rows in it, okay? But now that I've made that adjustment, I need to remember it so that my sleeves are the same length. <laughs> so a row counter is great for counting how many rows you get to on the first sleeve, writing that down, and then using it to make sure that the second sleeve is the same length. Um, all right, my third suggestion I love this one. Um, I'm obsessed with it. I think uh, my husband thinks I'm ridiculous, <laughs> but they're so much fun. I am of the Lisa Frank generation where you had sticker collections. Um, I, I had a notebook when I was little that I just put stickers that I loved in, and I just love to flip through them, and I love that they were sparkly and pretty and whimsical, and I still love it. Now they're just all... Um, yarn themed. So my next suggestion is stickers. There are so many adorable, creative, um, funny stickers with puns. I got this super cute sticker for my the back of my computer, which I can't show you because I'm talking to you on it right now. It's got um, a, a sheep on it and it says high in fiber. <laughs> I love that kind of stuff. It's so fun. Um, I know that sticking a, a sticker to something more expensive like a computer or something more public like a water bottle isn't for everybody. Um, but look, my tin with all of my stitch markers in it has a yarn sticker on it. And you can see the, uh, the balls inside the gumball machine are balls of yarn instead of gumballs, which is super cute. Um, I love to put stickers on notebooks, this is another thing that's like just kind of for me, it brings me joy to see the fun and beautiful stickers. This is my um, design notebook. So I look at this a lot. If you have, I mean, it doesn't have to be yarn related. If you have a journal or um, a little book that you look at every so often, it doesn't even have to be every day, um, putting a fun sticker on there um, is just just a fun way to be colorful and joyful. Lots and lots and lots of uh, fun and creative stickers on Etsy. I highly recommend um, Green Fox Farms Designs. She has some really cute stickers. Um, and Rebecca Haas Crochet also has some really um, fun and adorable stickers. You can also... Um, find some that are car decals. So like if you're super committed to your yarn craft and you want everybody driving behind you to know that, <laughs> you can get a sticker slash decal for your car. I will advise you, read all of the listings, whether you're shopping from a big company or, or a small maker, read the listings carefully because not all stickers can go on your car. Like they, they aren't made. You'll go through a car wash once or it'll rain and they'll get ruined. Um, and not all stickers are made to go through the dishwasher. So before you stick them on something like a water bottle that you're thinking you're going to get wet, um, you're going to want to read the description really carefully. All right. Um, my next suggestion. I know you're going to think I'm being dramatic. And if you know me, I'm a little dramatic. But this next uh, suggestion changed my life. Uh, it is one of my most favorite tools that I didn't even know I needed until I had it. Um, when I first learned about gauge rulers, um, I just saw them in other people's pretty pictures and I was jealous. I wanted a pretty gauge ruler to put in my pictures. Um, so of course, who do I go to? But Brienne of She Inspired, she makes beautiful wooden ones. Um, after I got this from her though, I don't know how I lived without it. 
a, you can measure gauge with a ruler or a tape measure, but I'm telling you, hands down, the way to do it is with a rigid gauge ruler like this. You will get such accurate gauge with a gauge ruler. Um, it just makes all the difference. Uh, <clears throat> measuring gauge without a gauge ruler is a pain in the patoot. Measuring it with a gauge ruler is so easy. So, so easy. Um, gauge rulers, again, come in a variety of price points. This is actually not expensive at all from Brienne. She has it in a little gift set. I'll show you um, at the little gift set in just a minute after I show you the last thing from the gift set. Um, <clears throat> but I think just buying just the gauge ruler is not all that expensive. Uh, but if you want to go to your local craft store and pick something up, you can pick something just like this up. It's just a little metal Susan Bates gauge ruler. Um, about nine years ago, but I'm going to guess if I had to guess under $5 and then you can use your 50% off coupon. Okay. Um, gauge rulers. This one is a four inch by four inch. You can also get them in two inch by two inch. If you look at my Susan Bates one, um, this is two inches by two inches. Um, I love having both. Um, I'm probably going to invest in a little gift for myself and get myself a two inch <laughs> wooden gauge ruler because I love it so much. Um, they can be fancy. They can be funny. Some of them um, uh, Etsy sellers will customize. Uh, if you want something like that, though, get on getting that ordered because, you know, shipping. Um, love, love, love my gauge ruler. All right. My next one is another one that I'm going to show you from Brienne. But again, you can get this from lots of places, from, um, you know, bigger companies to other handmade makers. This is from Brienne, and this is a wraps per inch tool. Now, if you know a crafter or you are a crafter who has all the tools, a wraps per inch tool is one that isn't quite as widely known about and is still super handy. So this might be a great way to sneak something in a stocking or give a little gift that's unexpected and that they don't have. So what a wraps per inch tool is, is they usually have a little space that measures an inch. And what you do is you simply wrap your yarn around that inch carefully and you, um, it helps you figure out what weight your yarn is. So this can be used in two ways. I, I don't think you can see it in my video here, but I like to, when I'm done with my yarn, I often will hand wind it into balls if there's just a little bit left of the skein. And then I throw them, I have a basket, I have a vase above me that I just toss all the balls of yarn into with no labels on them. And so sometimes when I think like, oh, I just need a little bulky yarn for a poster or a cup cozy or whatever. And I look at the yarn and I think, mm, is that bulky? I can use my wraps per inch tool wrap it around and then look at the guide and see if the yarn qualifies as a bulky yarn. The other thing is yarn, um, I like to say yarn or like buying yarn is like buying jeans. You can be a size 10, but a size 10 at Target is not a size 10 at J. Crew is not a size 10 at I don't know, whatever really fancy place you can buy pants that I don't buy pants because I'm cheap. <laughs> Worsted weight yarn is not all one standard size. It can go from almost DK weight to more of an Aran weight. An Aran weight is a separate weight class, but sometimes because people don't know about Aran weight, Aran weight yarn will get lumped into worsted weight. Anyway, so it can go from fairly thin worsted to a really heavy worsted. And a wraps per inch tool can help you compare two yarns that say they're worsted to see which one is maybe heavier and which one is lighter and how big is the difference between those. Because then you can take that information and compare it to the yarn that is used by the designer and give yourself some idea of um, 
how the different um, weight of yarn compares to what the designer used, which will help you make gauge easier. So wraps per inch tool. I'm going to go back a little bit. Brienne's, uh, last time I checked, her little gift set that she had was a gauge ruler, a wraps per inch tool, and this adorable little sheep ornament. Such a cute little gift. All right. <clears throat> Suggestion number five. Oh, six. Sorry. Suggestion number six is a cute tape measure. Whether you're measuring yourself to see what size you are or you're measuring your project to see if you've worked to eight inches or whatever they're asking you to do, a retractable tape measure is a great tool to have. And you can get them in all sorts of fun colors. And some of them have, how adorable is this guy, cute little... Um, uh, covers on them. I've linked below to several um, from a couple places. I I will go back and, and find a link, hopefully, for these cute little crocheted ones. These are my, they're just my favorite. They're so cute. I have one that's a little um, dog too. Um, but these are by Lantern Moon. And this is just off of Amazon. But it comes in lots of fun, bright colors. And if you, ha oh, you yourself or you have a friend who doesn't like you know, bright, bold colors like I do. Um, these also come in some really uh, cute neutrals, um, you know, like gray and tan and um, rose gold. They even have sparkly ones. There is a cute tape measure for everyone. All right. My last suggestion is not nearly as glamorous or adorable as a penguin tape measure, but it is one of the most useful tools I have and fits into my category of... Um, small and inexpensive. And that is tapestry needles. Now, when I first started, um, I just went and bought the cheapest tapestry needle I could find. And that works fine. Those are usually plastic. If you go too cheap, they can have places that snag on the yarn. And let me tell you, weaving in ends is probably one of my least favorite things to do anyway. So anything that makes it easier, I'm all on board for. And these are not that expensive. So Clover makes a tapestry needle. It comes in, in a couple sizes, three maybe, um, from small to jumbo, depending on um, the yarn weight you're working with. They, uh, let me see, oh, there we go. They have a, a little tip, at, curved tip at the end. That's great for working uh, your yarn in between and through stitches without splitting the yarn because that's not the goal um, and that can snag and stuff. But these, I typically am not a fan of um, metal tools, but having these be metal means that they're super sturdy so they can get through tight places and also they glide nicely through the yarn. So I highly, highly recommend it. All right. Those are my seven suggestions for small gifts slash stocking stuffers for yarn lovers um, this holiday season or anytime throughout the year. If you need a little birthday gift for somebody or a housewarming gift, any of these would be great ideas. So again, they are stitch markers, row counters, um, stickers, a gauge ruler, a wraps per inch tool, a fun tape measure, and nice tapestry needles. I highly, highly encourage you to check out the links below. Many, many of these things are available either through handmade shops or check your local yarn store. They may carry a, a bigger name brandy thing like um, Knitter's Pride, but it's always nice to support local uh, small businesses. So be sure if you have this available to check out um, handmade businesses and small businesses and support them this year. Uh, if you'd like some suggestion, lots of links in the description below. There's also a blog post to go read all about these different things and maybe to send on to somebody as a little suggestion um, of what you might like this holiday. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Then you'll be notified um, when I post new videos and go live. And uh, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. It helps other people 
find this video, uh, which is helpful to, to them and to me. And I truly appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining me today and happy crafting.